Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Holy FaceTime. Uh, this morning is May 10th, and this morning we celebrate the Ascension of our Lord. Of course, um, I know in some countries they move this day to the Sunday like they do here in Canada, but <clears throat> reading in Divine Intimacy, and uh, I know other places still do this uh, day as the Ascension of our Lord, so I thought I'd read from this this morning. Um, wonderful words of just encouragement. Um, <clears throat> so we begin the meditation this morning in, in, in the uh, Divine Intimacy. The central idea in the liturgy today is the raising of our hearts toward heaven so that we may begin to dwell in spirit where, where Jesus has gone before us. Christ's ascension, says St. Leo, is our own ascension. Our body has the hope of one day being where its glorious head has preceded it. In fact, our Lord had already said in his discourse after the Last Supper, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I should go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself, that where I am you also may be. The ascension is then a feast of joyful hope, a sweet foretaste of heaven. By going before us, Jesus our head has given us the right to follow him there some day, and we can even say with St. Leo, in the person of Christ, we have penetrated the heights of heaven. As in Christ crucified, we died to sin. As in risen Christ, we rise to the life of grace. So too, we are raised up to heaven in the ascension of Christ. This, vi this vital participation in Christ's mysteries is the essential consequence of our incorporation in him. He is our head and we are his members are totally dependent upon him and intimately bound to his destiny. God, who is so rich in mercy, says St. Paul, for his exceeding charity wherewith he loved us, hath quickened us together in Christ, and has raised us up, and has made us sit together in the heavenly places through, Jesus, through Christ Jesus. Our right to heaven has been given us, our place is ready, and it is for us to live in such a way that we may occupy it occupy it some day. Meanwhile, we must actualize the beautiful prayer which the liturgy puts forth on our lips. Grant, O Almighty God, that we too may dwell in spirit in the heavenly mansions <clears throat> where thy treasure is, there is also thy heart. Are there. <clears throat> Jesus said one day, if Jesus is really our treasure, our heart cannot be anywhere but near him in heaven. This is the great hope of the Christian soul, so that beautifully expressed in the hymn for Vespers, O Jesus, be the hope of our hearts, our joy and sorrow, the sweet fruit of our life. Besides, besides the hope of the joyful expectation of heaven, so characteristic of the Ascension Feast, there is this note of melancholy. Before the final departure of Jesus, the apostles must have been very disturbed. Each felt the distress of one who sees his dearest friend and companion going away forever and finds himself alone to face all the difficulties of life. The Lord realized their state of mind and consoled them once more, promising the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, and he commanded them, we read in the epistle, that they should not depart from Jerusalem but should wait for the promise of the Father. You shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence, but even this time the apostles did not understand how much they needed to be enlightened and transformed by the Holy Spirit in order to accomplish the great mission which was to be entrusted to them. Jesus continued, You shall receive the power of the Holy Ghost coming upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me, even to the uttermost part of the earth. For the moment, however, they were there around the Master, weak, timid, frightened, like little children watching their mother leave for a distant, unknown land. In fact, while they looked on, he was raised up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Two angels came to distract them from their great amazement and to make them realize what had happened. And then, placing their trust in the word of Jesus, which would henceforth be their only support, they returned to Jerusalem, where in the cynical they awaited in prayer the fulfillment of the promise, and it was this first novena in preparation for Pentecost. All these were preserving in one mind in prayer. 
met with Mary, the mother of Jesus. So this is one of the, <clears throat> he adds a little note here at the end here. Silence, recollection, prayer, peace with our brethren, and union with Mary. These are the characteristics of the novena we too should make in preparation for the coming of the Holy Spirit. And uh, St. John Paul II wrote in the, um, well, <clears throat> I guess, in one of his writings talking about the Ascension, and it's written in the Magnificat, uh, this morning's, in this morning's Mass, in the notes, that St. John Paul II said, um, the Ascension indicates the goal into which personal and universal history hastens. Heavenly glory, we are indeed bound for heaven, and the ascension reminds us that our gaze is to be fixed on Christ in glory, even as we labor tirelessly for, the, for him in this present age. That's the magnificent of this holy face devotion, right? We, we, we desire to see his face, to seek his face continuously, um, to be in that beatific vision that we long for. Um, so I... I thought I'd end with um, a prayer to entreat for the triumph of the church by means of the holy face. And this is taken from the manual of the Arts Confraternity. And I would ask that um, people would pray this prayer for, you know, the nine days leading up to the, uh, to the um, Pentecost. Uh, because the world is in, um, we're in, a, we're in a dire situation here. And the world really needs, we need, really need to this, another outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the church. And so I'd like to read this prayer. Lord, we entreat not thy face, though we might turn from our iniquities and think on thy truth. And the Lord has watched upon the evil and has brought it upon us. The Lord our God is just in all his works, which he has done, for we have not hearkened to his voice. Now, therefore, O our God, hear the supplication of thy servant and his prayers, and show thy face upon thy sanctuary, which is desolate. For thy own sake, incline, O my God, thy ear and hear. Open thy eyes and see our desolation, and the city upon which thy name is called. For it is not for our justification that we present our prayers before thy face, but for the multitude of thy tender mercies. O Lord, hear. O Lord, be appeased. Hearken and do, delay not for thy own sake, O my God, because thy name is invoked upon thy city and upon thy people. But there is no one who invokes this powerful name. There is none who lifts himself up to thee, and who endeavors by his supplication to restrain the effects of thy anger. Therefore, thou hast turned away thy face from us, and thou hast bruised us under the weight of our iniquities. Lord, Look upon us in pity. Keep no longer silence, and do not leave us prey to such sharp sorrows. Oh, if thou wouldst open the heavens and come down, the mountains would tremble before thy face. Thy name would be known amongst thy enemies. The nations would be struck with terror. Cast thine eyes upon us and remember that we are thy people. Amen. Well, Blessed be the name of the Lord, my friends. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be the adorable face of Jesus. Bye for now. Have a beautiful day. God bless.